Hi, this is Dr. Robert Lee from Waterloo Sports Medicine Center. A very important skill for a medical student to learn is physical examination of the musculoskeletal system. I'm making some videos to teach medical students specifically in how to perfect their exam techniques. The first video we're going to shoot is the examination of the knee. So I have help from two medical students who are presently doing electives with me. Hi, this is Laura. How are you? Okay, how are you? Good. And Andrew? How are you? Fine, thanks, Doctor. Good to see you. So here's our video on knee examination. Let's do it. Hi there. My name is Andrew. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm a medical student working at the clinic today. Would it be okay with you if I did a knee examination? Sure. Great. Thanks very much. Okay, to start, I'll get you to hop up and we're going to actually go out in the hall, so I'm going to evaluate your gait. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is just walk to the end of the hall, turn around and come back and do that a couple of times for me. So things that I'm looking for are the gait cycle. So I'm evaluating her heel strike, stance phase, and toe off, looking for a good rhythm. Any indication of an antalgic gait would be shown by spending less time during the stance phase on one foot versus the other. The other thing that I'm looking for would be in-towing or out-towing, suggesting internal rotation or external rotation at either the hip, knee, or foot joint. That's perfect. Thanks very much. You can come on back in. So now we proceed with some general inspection. So if you could face me. So things that I'm looking for are swelling around the knee joint, any indication of bruising or erythema, any atrophy of the muscles above or below, or any musculoskeletal deformities and I can't appreciate any. From this angle, you're really looking for a valgus or varus deformity, which I can't appreciate. And could you face that wall for me? From the side, you're looking for any hyperextension or flexion, contractures, or procurvitum or recurvitum, which I can't appreciate either. And if you just face away from me. From this angle, you're evaluating the posterior aspect of the knee, looking for any swelling or indication of a potential Baker cyst, which we don't see here. Great, now you can have a seat on the bed for me and just lay back. At this point you can proceed with palpating the knee. So start off by feeling the knee joint above, at, and below, evaluating for any temperature changes. The patella should feel colder than the rest of, than above and below. You can move on with general palpation starting in the quadriceps muscles, just looking for any tenderness, IT band, quadriceps tendon, patella, tibial tubercle, you can also flex the knee to about 90 degrees, palpate the joint line, Gertie's tubercle on the lateral side, Pez anserine on the medial side, LCL ligament by opening the joint line, MCL, you can then straighten the knee and then evaluate the patella. Start off by doing some patellar tracking or translation, as well as a patellar apprehension test by forcing the patella laterally. You can also look for fluid in the knee joint and blotting on either side of the patella. You can also evaluate patella tap, checking to see if the patella is floating, or the fluid shift test. Perfect. Next thing you can do is move on to strength testing. So we'll just get you to sit up and dangle your legs over the side. For this, stabilize the knee joint. Ask the patient to try to straighten their leg against your hand. Good. Relax. And now try to pull your heel in towards your butt. Good. Relax. And evaluate the range of motion at the knee joint. The best thing to do first is evaluate active range of motion. Yeah, ask the patient to just pull your knee up towards your nose and bend your knee as much as you can. Good, and now straighten it all the way back down. If the patient has good active range of motion, you don't have to do passive range of motion. But if they don't, then you can do it this way. Next, you can ch check the structural integrity of the knee joint. For structural stability, I like to start off with evaluating MCL. Put the knee in a slight valgus force, first at about 5 degrees, and then at about 15 to 20 degrees. Then you can evaluate the LCL. 
applying a slight Barris force. Then you can evaluate the ACL. There's a couple different tests for the ACL. This one is the anterior drawer. You can then evaluate the PCL with the posterior drawer. The second test is a Lachman's test. Here you're evaluating the end feel. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how to do a modified Lachman test, and this is helpful if you have tiny hands and if you're trying to examine someone with a bit of a larger leg or a heavier leg like Andrew here. So what I'm going to do is take my right leg, prop myself up on the bench like that, and this actually forces his hamstrings to relax, so it gives me a better exam. I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to stabilize his upper leg, left hand close to the joint line at the lower leg, and I'm going to do my test like that. And that gives me a lot of leverage for the Lachman test. We can then check the meniscus with McMurray's test. This is a complicated test. For the lateral compartment, we put a bit of a valgus force and internally rotate the tibia, bring the knee through full range of motion. The opposite, varus force, external rotation for the medial compartment. And if I could just get you to roll onto your stomach for me. You can do Apley's compression, which also evaluates the meniscus. Apply downward force to the tibia and internally and externally rotate. Any pain indicates potential meniscal pathology. And that concludes the knee examination. You can roll over and sit up. Thanks very much.